in today's video i am going to talk about my evangelism experiences in nigeria compared to the united kingdom my struggles with evangelism in the uk how the holy spirit stepped in how it transformed and changed the game for me when it comes to evangelizing i'll talk about the jesus model and how you can apply it welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new here welcome to my youtube channel my name is bidemi Ogoyemi. i love to talk about jesus christ and i share inspiring worship songs on this channel i share christian content experiences just like i'm going to share today i'm so passionate about people knowing jesus christ because i was once lost but now i am found and i want so many people to be found as well that's the motivation behind this video. So my evangelism experiences back home in Nigeria cannot be compared to what I had when I got to the United Kingdom. The candy truth is back home in Nigeria, I preach to people, they give their life to Christ, they give me their mobile number. I'm so excited. I'm able to follow them up over a period of time. They start coming to church. I was very active back home. People give their life to Christ. But here in the United Kingdom, that was a cultural shock. They don't even want to hear about Jesus Christ. They don't want you to reach out to them. And being the passionate person I am, I can't even forget some of those things Jesus Christ has showed me. So I cannot give up. I've been here for four years and I'm still trying. Guess what? I cracked it some weeks back by the help of the Holy Spirit. If I tell you it was easy, for the past three years that I've been going out to preach the gospel, no, it hasn't. Sometimes God just shine on me. I'll just be lucky to, to get people to talk to me, I preach to them, and they would think about it. But now it's not even about luck anymore. I'm going to tell you how the Holy Spirit got me to where I am today. But before going into it, one thing I didn't realize is that there is this cultural differences you need to study the environment that you are when you study your environment then you would be able to relate your message to them very well sometimes when i got on evangelism people will ask me questions like does jesus christ really exist no jesus christ is not true that they are atheists they don't believe in the existence of god some even made just of me and laugh it's always frustrating Maybe a month or two months ago i went out to preach the gospel as usual and i met a lady at the bus station so i was like hello can i speak to you and she was like yeah she took off her earpiece and as soon as i mentioned jesus she just plugged that earpiece in back she said no i'm sorry i'm not interested i don't want to hear i felt really down that's not the first time more see that feeling that i felt really down it's not the first time I'm feeling down about something like that. In short, I've always been feeling down anyways. But this time around, after feeling down, I didn't just feel down. I now ask the Holy Spirit, okay, Holy Spirit, what, what is happening? What is going on? What am I not doing well, Holy Spirit? And I heard the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, you shouldn't have started the conversation that way. You shouldn't have even mentioned Jesus to start with. Bear in mind, when I asked the Holy Spirit the question and he gave me that response, I was listening to a message by my senior pastor, Pastor David Ogwele. I just heard him say, oh, the Holy Spirit is your senior past partner. When you go out for evangelism, the Holy Spirit should go with you. So all those things coming together at the same time, I'm like, hmm, okay. Okay, I was like, Holy Spirit, what should I have said? How should I have started the conversation? So the Holy Spirit told me that you should have asked, what do you think about life after death? As the conversation was going in, in my heart between me and the Holy Spirit, I joined a bus. In that bus, I was like, Holy Spirit, let's practicalize what you've just taught me. Was there this lady sitting at my back? She had lots of piercings 
on her face, tattoo everywhere. In short, if I even go out on evangelism normally, yeah, I don't want to talk to people like that. Not because I'm discriminating. In most cases, when I talk to them, they don't always want to listen. They just shun me off. They don't even want to hear what I have to say. Because like, Holy Spirit, let us practicalize what you've taught me. And I looked back, I was like, hello. She was like, hello. I was like, yeah, I've got a question for you, you know. She was like, okay, what question? I said, what's your perspective about life after death? She was like, mm, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I've never thought about it. I said, yeah, but you know, we are all going to die someday. And she was like, yes, yeah, that's true. But I don't even know. So it's built that curiosity in her. I was like, okay. But some people say that, we just melt into nature. Some people believe in heaven and hell. Some people believe we are going to reincarnate. Does any of this resonate with you? She was like, I don't know. Really, I don't know. I was like, yeah. Do you know why I asked this question? Because I was also curious at some point in my life. And I started going, hey, I started going. And I talked about Jesus Christ, about how we will all die someday we will all stand before god that jesus christ has gone to prepare a place for us how jesus christ came into the world ah she listened to everything that i had to say that day and after preaching to her i have i had a free bible that i usually share in short that time i've just started sharing free bible and bear in mind i've had these bibles at home for months i'm unable to distribute them guys I distributed all the Bible within three days when that method worked. Hey, when it worked, I just started going out, carried five Bible out, six Bible out, just try to reach out to people, talk about Jesus Christ, use the same tactics, ask them questions, they listen, we have a conversation. At the end of the day, they receive the Bible. This lady collected the Bible from me. I was like, she said she would give it a try. That she would try to get to know Jesus Christ. And she took the Bible from me. I was so happy. That same day I said, oh yeah, it worked. Let us try with another person. So as soon as I alighted from the bus, I joined another bus. I tried the same method. It worked again. She, that lady also. And bear in mind, they're not black. So they're not Africans. They were on your book. Hey, it's real. Like it doesn't, it, usually it's not always like that, to be honest. In short concept, we even have to beg them to wait, to listen. But this time, they listen. Even thank me. <laughs> like, people are now thanking me for preaching to them. They were thanking me. Say, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't know. I didn't know. Don't worry, I'm going to start. There's even another one who so, so me and say, oh, I'm not joking. I've been here for four years. On that two months of evangelizing with the Holy Spirit, there was a transformation. And to be honest, I was so happy. In most cases, they don't like to give an instantaneous response. Like say, oh, I received Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. So I'll ask them, should I give you a Bible? This is the kind of Bible I share. I'll say, should I give you a Bible? And they'll be like, oh, thank you so much. No one has ever gifted me this before. I said, are you going to read it? Oh, they'll promise me, yes, I'm going to read it. So what I did now is that I printed some flyers. I did this on Canva. I folded this one. So I'll just put it in between the Bible. Invitation to receive Jesus. And I wrote, you have this leaflet because someone told you about Jesus and you assured him or her that you are going to think about it. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. He loves you so much. At the back of the flyer, I wrote prayer of acceptance, how to receive Jesus Christ. Fill this gap. I blah, blah, blah on this day. Accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Please reach out to us. Because you can't just be scattering seed. Starter pack. Starter pack. So I'm just using this to encourage you. Before I'll go out with Bibles, I'll come back with my Bible again. But not anymore. Now let's talk about the Jesus model. You can find the Jesus model of evangelism in the book of John chapter 4, verse 11 to 26. Please start from verse 7. You might want to pause and read part of the Bible verses. This is where Jesus Christ spoke to a Samaritan woman. Jesus Christ asked her for water, had an icebreaker. So what will be your icebreaker? 
ask the Holy Spirit. The candid truth is, for different people, there might be different icebreakers. I tried the method the Holy Spirit gave me for personal one-to-one, one-on-one evangelism for public evangelism. It didn't work. It don't work. So there are different strategies for evangelizing to different group of people. So you don't just use the same tactics or you are taught one uh, method. You just apply that same method to all your evangelisms. No, the method changes. It just depends on setting and the environment. So what am I saying? This Jesus model, we see that Jesus Christ started with an icebreaker of asking the woman for water. And now Jesus Christ also intrigued her to want to know more. Do you understand? Because if you do not let people see a problem, they won't know why there should be solution. So you need to help them to see the problem first before prescribing the solution. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ is. And that's exactly what the Holy Spirit tells me to first of all ask, what's the life after death? And that was an that was an intriguing question for them. They're like curious, like I don't know. I think what okay, you what do you think when they ask me? Uh-huh. And now we can now start going into we believe in heaven and hell and how Jesus Christ came into the world to die for our sins and how he wants us to spend eternity with him and how he promised us eternity in heaven and how we should not gamble our eternal life and how they, unbelievers, can go to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, if you truly exist, reveal yourself to me. So when you show them the problems, we were all sinners. We were all lost in our sins until Jesus Christ came with the saving grace and power to pull us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That will be on another video when I'll talk about the mistake people make with evangelism. And trust me, get ready for questions because they would ask you lots of questions. In short, there was a lady, I give glory to God, that we spoke to myself and my sister in Christ. She started with, I'm an atheist. And we're like, yo, we just want to ask you a question. Don't worry. What's your perspective on afterlife? When she was giving her responses, and I started put, pick, pulling out points, asking her questions, she was like, the next thing she said was, there are so many religions. How do I know the right one? From being, I am an atheist, to asking me how she would know the right religion, to now telling me that, okay, give me the Bible. I will seek God. We can talk from today to tomorrow, but the one thing that transforms people's life is their personal encounter with God. So if there's anything I push for, I push for people seeking God's face, seeking to have a personal encounter with him. Because you can preach from today to tomorrow, you can talk from today to tomorrow. If they don't have an encounter with God, it's always very difficult for them to stay consistent in their work and their relationship with God. In short, people that had personal encounter with God are backsliding. Talk less of people that don't even have any encounter with God. Especially the degradation that is in today's society. So as believers, we have a duty or a responsibility that has been bestowed on us by Jesus Christ. So how do you apply everything that I have said today? How do you apply it to your own evangelism life? Number one, I want you to understand that there is something called cultural differences. And you need to study the culture, the environment where you are. Irrespective of the cultural differences, there's something called the icebreaker. And the icebreaker can break any ice in any culture. So irrespective of your environment, ask the Holy Spirit. My own icebreaker now is what was your perspective on life after death? In most cases, people will be in truth. They will be drawn to have a conversation with me. So ask the Holy Spirit if you want to adopt my icebreaker on asking people what's, what's their perspective on life after death. And they respond back to you. From their responses, you can now start clarifying things for them and start telling them that, okay, you believe in this, you believe in that. How do you know that what you believe is true? Some people will tell you they believe in reincarnation. How do you know reincarnation is true? And I tell people that you go to bed at night, you have crazy dreams. You see yourself in a different place. When you lie in bed at night, you are so unconscious. You don't know what is happening around you. But you see yourself in crazy places. It's something they can resonate with. And they're like, yes. I said, now, just imagine where we die. 
it's going to be worse because we won't be able to come back. So this is the time to seek the truth. So it gives, it makes them to just sit back and reflect. Yeah, because we're all going to die whether we like it or not. Hmm? So it gives them this opportunity to sit back and reflect and say, oh yeah, that's true. I need to seek. I said, this is the time to dig. I believe in heaven and hell. Jesus Christ revealed himself to me. In that process, I share my testimony with them of how Jesus Christ saved me. How I used to be very fearful. How I had lots of traumatic experiences. How Jesus Christ pulled me out of that trauma. And how he revealed to me his existence through dreams, through study of the world, through asking questions and the Holy Spirit answered me, through the Bible. So I tell them, if you don't seek God, you won't find him. You have to seek him. And whoever you are, however you are, Jesus Christ wants you to come to him. Some people will even ask me, I met a guy during evangelism. This guy was like, oh, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. God is wicked. God is wicked. I'm like, yo, wait, calm down. You said God is wicked. Why do you think God is wicked? Can you share with me? I want to know why you think God is wicked. He said, yes, why will a good God send people to hell? simple because i told him the kind of truth is god does not want you to go to hell god doesn't want you to go to hell and this is why jesus christ came into the world see the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life i told him i said before jesus christ came into the world to die for our sins we all were already on our way to hell because of what adam and eve and the garden of eden disobeyed god and when they disobeyed god they brought sin upon the humanity because we were in their loins the same way we inherit diseases sicknesses and genes from our forefathers our parents that is the same way sin was inherited sin entered into the bloodstream of man and now jesus christ came and say all of you come to me believe in me that i died for your sin and i rose again and you will have access to heaven i said but what sent people to hell is what people you are doing now running away from god god does not want you to go to hell even beyond how you don't want to go to hell on your own and that's why jesus christ came he died a painful death the boy to look as if they put cold water on him all the lies that the demons have been telling him since all these days on how wicked God is, on how God wants to send us to hell. He, all the lies just crashed. A special grace of God. So you need to trust the Holy Spirit. I'm going to make another video. If you want me to, just pop it in the comment section where I share some of the questions I've been asked during evangelism and how I responded to those questions. If that's going to be okay, please click on that subscribe button. Click on the subscribe button. Ask your question in the comment section and I'm going to respond back to you. All right. Ciao, ciao. Take care. Bye.